Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're just gonna be working through the conditional analysis practice. Uh, this practice sheet can be found on your course website. I would recommend that if you haven't already tried this uh, practice sheet on your own, that you should uh, try that first before watching this sort of solution video. Uh, otherwise, uh, what we're gonna be doing in this video is just working through this one question, just giving you guys some additional practice doing conditional analysis. So for this practice sheet, we have just one question on here. We're going to do this uh, bunch of sort of different sort of analyses and just think about the sort of data set that we're sort of given here. So uh, we'll get right into it. Uh, we've got this ice cream parlor that is trying out three new flavors of breakfast inspired ice cream. So for what they do is for one month, they sort of monitor the sales of these three new flavors and interview any customers that purchase these three flavors, asking them sort of what do they think of this flavor, so their sort of review of the flavor. So the three flavors that they're experimenting with are Earl Grey, Blueberry Muffin, and Chocolate and Bacon. And then you can see that they allowed people to say that the flavors were either very good, good, okay, or bad. And then this right here, all this data would sort of make up what we called a two-way table. And we're gonna do a bunch of different things like with this. We're gonna figure out sort of, you know, which was the most purchased flavor. It doesn't necessarily mean the best, but just which one was purchased the most frequently. We're gonna calculate a couple percentages. We're gonna construct a conditional distribution, look at a couple rates from the conditional distribution, and then ultimately use all of that to sort of make a decision. And the decision we're gonna to try to make is if they're only gonna keep one of these three sort of breakfast inspired ice creams, which one should they keep? So we'll do all of that and we'll begin that on the sort of next page here. So there's our sort of data just so that we can have that as we're working. Remember this right here is a two-way table. And as soon as you see a two-way table, you know you want to annotate it with all these sort of row and column totals. So let's go ahead and get those row totals first. So we should get 107, then 21, 101, and 20, you should get 142. Then 35, 36, and 31, you should get 102. And then 9, 18, and 90, you should get 117. Column totals, you should have 86 for Earl Grey. You should have 183 for Blueberry Muffin. And 199 for Chocolate and Bacon. And then the overall table total, right? Uh, you can either add up those row totals or you can add up the uh, column totals. Either way you do that, you should get 468. So what we're saying is that during this sort of month that they were monitoring the data, they sold 468 to 468 customers, they sold these breakfast inspired ice creams, right? 86 people chose to have the Earl Grey, 183 had the blueberry muffin, 199 had the chocolate bacon. So now we're gonna do some analysis with this. The first thing that we wanted to do was just say, which was the most frequent flavor. Well, we can do that pretty easily just by looking at these column totals. We can see that chocolate bacon by just a little bit was more frequently purchased than blueberry muffin, whereas these two were very much more frequent compared to the Earl Grey, which seemed to be not as frequent by, by a pretty wide margin. So the most frequent flavor here would be chocolate bacon with 199 sort of purchases, right? So 199 people or 199 purchases occurred of that chocolate bacon. All right, let's go ahead and calculate some percentages. We also wanted to get the sort of percent of sample uh, who picked Earl Grey and said that the flavor was okay. So what we wanted to do there is we want to find the people who did two things. One is that they picked Earl Grey and they said the flavor was okay. So they have to have both those traits. Well, the Earl Grey people are here and the okay people are here. So the intersection of that would be those 35 people that had Earl Grey and said that it was okay. So to do this, we would do 35 out of that 468. And then we just get that as a percentage, 35 divided by 468. Looks like that should be about 7.5%. So 7.5% of our sample were people who chose Earl Grey and then reported that they thought the flavor was okay. All right, we've got another percentage that we wanna do here. We wanna do the percentage of sample uh, who, said, who picked uh, chocolate bacon or 
said very good. Now, of course, or means that they could have picked chocolate bacon, or they could have just said that their flavor, maybe not chocolate bacon, was very good, or they did both of these. So what we want to do here is we want to take all the sort of chocolate bacon people, those 199, and add that to all the very good people. But of course, when we do that, if we take all the chocolate bacon and all the very good, we're going to be double counting those 58 people there. So we have to make sure we subtract that 58, that overlap out. So to do this, we would do 199, that's the total for chocolate bacon, plus 107, that's the total for very good, minus 58, which is the overlap, and then divide by 468. When we do that, we get 199 plus 107 minus 58, which should be 248 out of 468. And then when we do that division, 248 divided by six, uh, 468, we should get about 53.0%. So about 53% of our sample were people who either picked chocolate bacon or ended up saying that their flavor was very good. Now keep in mind this 248, you could have found this just by sort of manually adding everything up. So you could have done 21, uh, the, or sorry, the 58, the 20, the 31, and the 90, and then added the 21 and the 28, because that would be everybody who had chocolate bacon as well as all the very goods, and you would still get 248. This is just a little bit faster of a way to do that. All right, now we wanted to do a conditional based on flavor. Well, that means we're treating flavor as the explanatory variable, which makes sense, right? We would think the flavor that they choose might impact how they review it. It wouldn't make sense to say that the review impacts the flavor. So we're treating flavor as the explanatory variable. Flavor was in the sort of different columns. So we want to divide by the column totals. So let's go ahead and recreate our chart by dividing through by the column totals. Again, remember when you go to build the conditional, you just need to fill in the inside of the chart. You don't have to worry about the sort of totals or anything like that. So we'll fill in our little chart there. Okay, there we go. So to fill in this first sort of column for Earl Grey, we'll be dividing everything in that column by 86. So 21 divided by 86, should give us 24.4. So 24.4% of people who had Earl Grey said it was very good. It'll be the same for good because it's got the same value there. Then 35 divided by 86 should give us 40.7%. And then finally nine divided by 86 gave us 10.5%. So when we look at Earl Grey, about a quarter of the people said that it was very good, about a quarter said that it was good, about 40% said it was okay, and only about 10% said that it was bad. Now we're gonna go and do that for Blueberry Muffin, dividing everything by 183, because 183 is the column total. So 28 divided by 183 is gonna give us 15.3%. Then 101 divided by 183 is gonna give us 15. 55.2%. Then 36 divided by 183 is going to give us 19.7%. And finally, 18 divided by 183 is going to, oh, sorry, uh, 18 divided by 183 is going to give us 9.8%. Okay. So for Blueberry Muffin, only 15% of people thought it was very good, about over half the people thought it was good, about 20% thought it was okay, and only about 10% thought that it was bad. Finally, for Chocolate Bacon, we'll be dividing everything by 199, so 58 divided by 199. Looks like that should be 29.1%. Uh, then 20 divided by 199 should be about 10.1%. Then 31 divided by 199 should be 15.6%. And finally, 90 divided by 199 should be 45.2%. So there is the breakdown for chocolate bacon, right? About 30% of people who had it thought it was very good. About 10% thought it was good. About 15% thought it was okay. And close to half the people thought it was bad. Okay, that's our conditional distribution based on the flavor. So let's go ahead then and look at a couple rates. So we wanted the highest rate of very good. Well, 
The highest rate of very good here, well, 24.4 for Earl Grey, only 15.3 for Blueberry Muffin, and 29.1 for Chocolate Bacon. So it'd be Chocolate Bacon with 29.1%. So close to 30% of people who had that chocolate bacon flavor said that it was very good. And that was higher than Earl Grey, which was only about 24%, and definitely higher than Blueberry Muffin, which is only 15%. For the next one, we wanted to get the lowest rate of bad. Well, if we look at that, the Earl Grey was only 10%, Blueberry Muffin was slightly lowered at 19.8, or 9.8, and chocolate bacon had a very high rate of bad, which is 45.2. So this would be blueberry muffin with only 9.8%. So we can see here why we sort of bother with this analysis. Notice that having the highest rate of very good does not mean that you have the lowest rate of bad. In fact, chocolate bacon had the highest rate of very good and also the highest rate of bad, which sort of tells you that chocolate bacon is like a pretty polarizing sort of flavor, right? People either really like it or really dislike it. All right, let's go ahead then and choose sort of the flavor to keep. Okay, so if you think about it, you could make arguments in some ways for all the sort of different flavors. But there is definitely one flavor here that seems to have the strongest argument based on the data. So let's think about Earl Grey first. Earl Grey, well, it didn't really win the very good because we can see that it wasn't quite as high of a rate compared to chocolate bacon. It definitely doesn't win the good because that's much lower than the blueberry muffin. And it didn't really win the bad, though it was close to blueberry muffin. It was only 10% versus that 98 the big sort of downside to Earl Grey, though, the reason we probably wouldn't want to choose that flavor is back up here. Only 86 people chose to buy it during that course of the month. That was less than half of who the, of the people that chose blueberry muffin or chocolate bacon. So we probably wouldn't want to keep Earl Grey because it didn't get the best reviews and it just didn't seem like people were that interested in it. What about blueberry muffin? Well, Blueberry Muffin had some good stuff. It had the lowest rate of bad. That's a good sign. You don't really want people disliking a flavor you have. And if you look back, it was pretty close in sales. So it seemed pretty interesting. And generally speaking, people didn't dislike it. What about chocolate bacon? Well, chocolate bacon, it was very interesting to people. It had the most sales during the course of the month. But this 45.2% of people disliking it seems like a risk. This basically means that close to half the people who have this flavor end up not enjoying it. Now, of course, you could say, well, who cares, right? They, they tried it. At least they bought it once, right? I mean, clearly lots of people were interested in buying it. But it does seem sort of risky to choose something that you know close to half the people that are going to try might dislike. So probably the safest flavor to keep here would be that blueberry muffin, right? It had the second most sales, right? And it was close to first, right? It was 183 to 199. It also had the lowest rate of bad, 9.8%. And you could also argue it has the highest rate of very good plus good. If you think about it, very good and good are sort of the two positive reviews. And if you combine these, right, you can see that that was about 70.5%. All I'm doing there is just adding 15.3 and 55.2. That 70.5% of people gave it a positive review. That's higher than either other flavor, where for Earl Grey, it was only 48.8. And for chocolate bacon, it's only about 39.2. So by a pretty wide margin, it had the highest rate of positive reviews. So all of these things sort of give us a good argument for keeping Blueberry Muffin. It seemed pretty interesting to people with the second most sales. It had the lowest percentage of people who disliked it, and it had the highest percentage of people who gave it a positive review overall. In the next uh, sort of solutions video, we'll work our way through the introduction to probability practice that you can also find on your guys' course uh, website. And I hope we'll see you then.